Okay, so welcome guys to the channel. Um, this is going to be the first video in the series, creating a top-down shooter, a very simple, fun top-down shooter game. And in this case, I'll just come to new project, assuming you've already stored Cocos Creator. If you've not installed Cocos Creator and Visual Studio Code, um, you, can, you can watch this video uh, that will be in this section. And then you can download right now the latest version is 2.2 i've just downloaded it and uh, that's the one i'll be using so first up select the empty project and then let's go on and create our game so the name is going to be my shooter then i'll go on and say create don't worry about this guys i'll you I'll, I'll need this to explain um some of the things that i'll be doing uh, perhaps in this same tutorial um, maybe in the next one depending on how long this one goes on for okay so for this simple game we'll just need a few basic assets a background um, the bad guy and um, some things to shoot so in this case um, the background you'll find all of these files are linked to my github so you can download the whole project um, or even just the assets and then uh, create this with me. So this is what you'll be shooting at. This is some, some alien of some sorts. And then um, of course our soldier, our soldier is over here. Um, this soldier is the one that's going to be shooting and this is the bullet that's going to be being uh, generated. Um, the gun sound is here and of course our, our font uh for for showing our scores so in this case um that's basically what we need to create okay so we can proceed so next up first of all we'll just load all the assets um in here and then we'll change the project properties so let's go back to this folder We'll start with the background. I'll just drag the background in my uh, assets. Okay, then once it's here, I'll drag it to my screen. Um, I it's a simple background, just completely white background. Um, make sure that it's uh, a child of the canvas. So I'll make sure that it's aligned properly with the camera by dragging it inside the canvas itself. Notice. Um, how it's lined up now okay so i'll zoom out a little bit and then change the overall project size so the picture itself uh this background uh it's a 1280 by 720 okay 1280 by 720 uh 768 pixels so this is a basically 720p game but um the project needs to be adjusted for that because its resolution is much much lower so i'll go on project then go to project settings and then um, inside here we'll change this so that it matches our overall picture 1280 by 768 so that's going to be our project size then we'll also make sure that it fits the width so that's basically that after doing that we will then change the design resolution there as well 1280 by 768 so with that done we can click save then this will prompt to create a new scene this scene is going to be called game okay so that's created there and then all i'll do is basically just drag and make sure that our background is within this canvas so the canvas is this area here so this area here this is what's visible when i put uh, my game preview this is what's visible when you start running the game so everything will have to be thrown inside here so in this case i'll just make sure that it's exactly at the center by changing the position to zero zero so that it fits exactly at the center so this is basically our game scene right now next up 
I will also load our bad guy. So this bad guy is going to come in our assets again, like that. And then I will drag and put him there. Okay, so there's our bad guy. Right now he's not visible in the game. Okay, there he is. Okay, so yeah. So right now if I try running this, let me just see how it's um, laid out. Um, this is my first time using version 2.2. I've just updated it myself and um, it's supposed to be very, very fast compared to the other versions. Okay, so okay, that's where it's showing up. Okay, so one more thing before we go on. Our canvas will also have to be set to fit with like that. Okay, then we'll also make sure that our bad guy is a child of the canvas like that. So this time when we open it, this should uh, show us the full, yes, the full, the full background rather than just showing what's visible. So that's basically why I had to check both feet height and feet width so that every time we run the game, uh, we can see the full height and the full width of the screen rather than just part of it. So we'll go on and save. Okay, we'll go on and save. Then we'll include our soldier. So here's our soldier. Okay, so this soldier will then be dragged onto the scene as well. Then we'll make sure that he's also part of the canvas like that. Okay, so looks small enough. If he's too big, I'll adjust his size, but for now, I think this is fine. Yeah, okay, so this guy is the one going to be shooting this thing right there. Okay, then... Next up, we'll include our bullet. So, we include our bullet there. Then, we'll drag the bullet onto the scene as well. So, that's a very big bullet. <laughs> I will actually reduce the size quite a bit. Okay, so, maybe by half. I'll just scale it by half. So 0 0.5 on scaling just to make it smaller, but I still want it very, very visible um, so that when you shoot from where you are to where this guy is, um, you should be able to see the bullet, but I don't want the bullet to be too large. So that's going to work well. Let me see how that looks. Okay, that's clear enough. You guys can feel free to make the bullet smaller if it looks too, if it looks too large. Okay. Then, yeah, let me just adjust. Okay, so next up with that done, we we'll now have to start creating the logic for this. Um, this first tutorial is just meant to create the necessary things that we use. So I'll create a folder. So right here on assets, go create folder. Then this folder will contain scripts. So basically just need three scripts uh, for this tutorial. Okay, and now between JavaScript and TypeScript, personally, okay, um, if you've seen my other video tutorial, I used um, the TypeScript file. And most people ask me this question, uh, whether it's in my online courses or um, right here on YouTube, why do I use TypeScript? Why not just use JavaScript? And the truth is, guys, I've never done a TypeScript tutorial. I'm a JavaScript developer at heart, but with that said, I prefer using the TypeScript files. Now, the reason is because I like the way the TypeScript file is generated compared to the way the JavaScript file is generated. Ideally, in real life, um, you can use either of them. All the methods are exactly the same. You just have to change the syntax in a few places. But for me personally, I always go with TypeScript 
even though in that TypeScript file, I will be writing JavaScript because TypeScript allows you to write JavaScript. Um, like I've said, I've never done a TypeScript tutorial. I only use TypeScript because it's um, it, the, the file uh, is easier on my eyes. So I, I find it easier for beginners as well. So you can write all your JavaScript in the TypeScript file and that's going to be okay. So in this case, that's basically what I will be doing. So even if I'm going with TypeScript, um, in reality, I'm going to be writing JavaScript code. Okay. Um, for those that are completely TypeScript, um, you guys probably are already understand this, that you can write JavaScript code in TypeScript files. So that's basically what's going to happen. That's why I use um, TypeScript. Okay, so we're going to create three scripts. So the first one is going to be bad. This is basically the script that will belong to this um, this bad guy of ours here. So when you, when you create a script, you, you have to attach the script to a node on the scene. So in this case, um, I'll click bad. Okay, this, this guy. And then down here on my component, I will say add custom component and then I'll select the bad script. So if I open the script, um, it's going to only have a few things in it, some properties and um, some, some, yeah, some boilerplate code um, for the functions that are used by Cocos Creator. But in this case, I just want to leave it blank. And like I said, I'm just um, setting up for the next few tutorials. Okay, so... Let me get so I'll get rid of these default properties that come baked in. Then I'll leave everything else the way it is. Okay, next up, I'll create the next file. So this is going to be movement. Movement. So this movement script is actually going to be used because this is a top-down shooter what we want is for this player to be able to shoot this guy so this game these these aliens will be sh will be spawning all around um these er these areas and what we want is wherever our mouse is pointing that's where this player should be facing so this movement script is going to be for this uh soldier to be able to follow the mouse um, wherever the mouse is pointing, that's where I should face. So that's why I'll add this one. So movement has been added to the soldier. I'll also get rid of the default properties that are in there. Right now I'm just leaving them blank. Okay. Then of course, um, we'll create one more. So this is going to be the main script game. So the game script is going to be used to keep track of the scores, um, to spawn bad guys, to spawn bullets, um, to play sounds and things like that. So that's what this one is going to be used for. So I'll also get rid of the default properties in there. Okay, then next up, I'll, I'll attach this game script to our canvas. So attach that. So that's game. Yeah. So right now what we have is bad. The bad guy has the bad script. The player has uh, the movement uh, script. And then the whole scene, in this case canvas, will have the game script will write the code in the next section, but for now, I hope this has been uh, helpful. So, in the next in the next section, what we'll be talking about is now how to make this player move, uh, or rather, in, in this case, uh, change the rotation based on where my mouse is pointing. If you've got any questions, please uh, do that in the comments. Uh, throw this video a like, subscribe if you've 
if you if if you want more cocos creator content and if you want to give me more support yeah you can look at the links below for some of the cocos creator courses that i've come up with on udemy i will be ending here